Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. Today, my topic is VLAN trunking protocol or VTP. VLAN trunking protocol is a Cisco proprietary protocol whose primary goal is to manage all configured VLANs consistency across a switched network. In the next few minutes, I will talk about why VTP and how it works, plus with several related concepts such as VTP doming, three VTP modes, configuration revision number, three types of VTP messages, and VTP pruning. Let's start with this example. Imagine we have a bunch of switches on a network. Without VLAN trunking protocol, we would configure each switch separately. We would create and manage VLANs manually on each and every switch. This method would be very time-consuming, and it is very easy to make mistakes. With VLAN trunking protocol, we can create VLANs on one switch, VTP server, and all other switches, VTP clients, will synchronize themselves. VLAN trunking protocol centralizes VLAN management. We can add, modify, or delete a VLAN on a VTP server, then the server will distribute all these configurations to other VTP clients in the same VTP domain. In this example, we have mentioned several terms, like VTP domain, VTP server, and VTP clients. Let's talk about them one by one. First, let's talk about VTP domain. A VTP domain consists of a group of interconnected switches. All switches in a domain share VLAN configuration details. On a large network, we might have several VTP domains. A router or a layer 3 switch defines the boundary of each VTP domain. When configuring VTP for the first time, we must always assign a domain name. We must configure all switches in the VTP domain with the same domain name. Until the VTP domain name is specified, VLANs cannot be created or modified on a VTP server, and VLAN configuration is not propagated over the network. A switch can be a member of only one VTP domain at a time. Now, let's talk about three VTP modes. There are three VTP modes, VTP server, VTP client, and VTP transparent. By default, all Cisco switches are VTP servers, but most of the time, each VTP domain can have two duplicate VTP servers. The secondary server can take over in case when the primary VTP server fails. There are three important points about VTP server. One, VTP server can create, modify, and delete VLANs. Two, VTP server can send and forward advertisements. Three, VTP server can synchronize VLAN configurations from other VTP servers with the high revision number. There's three points about VTP clients. One, VTP clients can send and forward advertisements. Two, VTP clients can synchronize VLAN configurations from the VTP server. Three, VTP clients cannot add, modify, or delete VLANs. They can only get the information from a VTP server. The third mode is VTP transparent. There's also three points to remember. One, VTP transparent does not participate in VTP domain. It does not advertise or synchronize VLAN configurations from the server, but it can forward advertisements. Three, VTP transparent can create, modify, and delete local VLANs only. Only local. Let's talk about another concept, the configuration revision number. The configuration revision number indicates the level of revision for VTP packet. This information is used to determine 
whether the received message is more recent than the current version. Each time that we make a VLAN change on a VTP device, the configuration revision number is incremented by one. Thus, we should be very careful when we want to add a new switch to a VTP domain. Keep in mind, Cisco switches are by default VTP servers. Make sure that its VTP configuration revision number is lower than the revision number in the VTP domain. Otherwise, it can erase all VLAN information from VTP servers and VTP domain. Now let's talk about three types of VTP messages. Summary advertisements, subset advertisements, and advertisement request. VTP server sends summary advertisements to other switches every five minutes by default. Summary advertisements include the current VTP domain name, the configuration revision number, VTP version, but they do not have details about VLAN configurations. When a switch receives a summary advertisement, it compares the VTP domain name to its own VTP domain name. If the name is different, the switch simply ignores the packet. If the name is the same, the switch often compares the configuration revision number to its own revision number. If its own revision number is higher or equal, the packet is ignored. If it is lower, the client will update its database. The second type is a subset advertisement which include details of VLAN information. Subset advertisements follow the summary advertisement. The third type is client advertisement request. It is a request sent to VTP server to ask for the VTP summary advertisement and subset advertisement. When the server hears the request, it will respond with VTP summary advertisement and a subset advertisement. The last concept, VTP pruning. Let's take a look at an example. Computer A and Computer B are two hosts of a green VLAN. When Computer A broadcasts, it intends to broadcast towards any switch ports assigned to the green VLAN, but the message will flood the whole network. All switches in the VTP domain receive broadcasts, thus creating unnecessary traffic. With the VTP pruning, we can virtually prune all links towards those switches which has nothing to do with the green VLAN. When computer A broadcast again, only related switches get the message, thus reducing unnecessary flooded traffic. In summary, VTP allows VLAN configurations to be consistently maintained across the VTP domain. VTP reduces chances of VLAN configuration inconsistencies and errors. One last point, we are not required to use VTP to configure VLANs or trunking on Cisco switches, and we can choose not to use VTP at all. I hope this video is helpful. If you want to learn network systematically, please check out my playlists. They are organized by topics. Thank you very much and see you next time.